Guys, it's that time of year. A lot of you have been asking me where my second volume of this Blu-ray collection video has been, and well, here it is. But I'm not sure you guys realize how much this collection has grown over the last year. Oh boy. But you know what? I love making these videos for you guys, so instead of doing a haul video this month, let's go through every single Blu-ray I have once again. So welcome everybody to what my parents have dubbed my own personal blockbuster. God, don't you miss Blockbuster? I do too. And this is also just as a way to say thank you for making my first Blu-ray collection video by far the most viewed video on my channel. I'm honestly still so floored by all the love you've shown that video. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hey, if this is your first time visiting my channel today, what the heck are you still waiting for? Hit that subscribe button down below as hard as you possibly can. I'm doing Blu-ray haul videos every single month, as well as my traditional cinema reviews, and I've got a very, very exciting weekend lined up next week. And if you like what you see by the end of the video, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button on your way out. It really, really helps me get this content out there. So without any further ado, guys, let's go through every single goddamn movie behind me. There's no conceivable way that I could go through a story for every single one of these without making it five hours long. But regardless, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Ah! Alright, here we go. Alphabetical order, that's the only way you could sort these out. First one in the pile, 310 to Yuma, an amazing, amazing remake of an old school western by James Mangold. You're going to see a lot of these in the collection as well. These Best Buy exclusive steelbooks, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Haven't watched this movie in a long, long time. I think I need to check this one out again. That's the magic of these kind of videos. You just kind of see movies in the pile that you haven't thought of in a while, and it's just... Huh, it's just so fun, guys. You get 10 Things I Hate About You, speaking of. Heath Ledger and Joseph Gordon-Levitt in the same movie. Pretty awesome. Excellent. Speaking of excellent, guys, one of my all-time favorite films, 12 Angry Men. Oh... I can't say enough good things about this. This is absolutely timeless. Part of the Criterion Collection. Not the last Criterion you'll be seeing here. But if you've never seen 12 Angry Men, I highly recommend it. You got 12 Monkeys, Bruce Willis. Very strange film. I watched that recently. I don't exactly know what to think of it. 12 Strong with Chris Hemsworth. Haven't seen that one in a while either. One of the most scarring movies I've ever seen in my life. 12 Years a Slave. I remember my AP US history teacher showed the class this as extra credit my junior year of high school and it was just, ugh. Not one of those movies you'd want to pop in every single time, but you know what? It won Best Picture, so I kind of got to have it in the collection. Some of my favorite comedies from the last decade, 21 and 22 Jump Street. These are absolutely hysterical. Kind of made me a fan of Channing Tatum, amazingly enough. Very, very funny. 28 Days Later by Danny Boyle. Not the biggest fan of that. Not the biggest, I mean, you know, I like zombies, but 28 Days Later just wasn't really my cup of tea. The 39 Steps by Alfred Hitchcock. This is actually a brand new film I picked up in that Criterion sale that Barnes & Noble has twice a year. <sighs> Next up is The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Oh, Kelly Clarkson! The movie that made Steve Carell famous. There you go. Uh, 42, rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. This was one of your best performances for sure. Miss that dude every single day. 50-50, a very underrated comedy film. Uh, definitely, definitely recommend checking this one out if you haven't yet. On the topic of 12 Years a Slave not being as rewatchable, how about 127 Hours? Jesus H. Christ, this movie. This is Sparta! Uh, 300. You also have 500 Days of Summer, one of the best romantic comedies ever, as far as I'm concerned. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, you're seeing a lot of him in this first little stack of films. He really understands this genre, doesn't he? 1408, an incredibly underrated Stephen King movie. I watched that around Halloween time last year for the first time. It was excellent. 1917 by Sam Mendes. Excellent. And I also have 2001 A Space Odyssey. I realize a lot of my fellow cinephiles find this film overrated, but you know what? This was a game changer in the late 60s, and Stanley Kubrick has got to be commended for this groundbreaking gem of a movie. Absolutely incredible. Accepted. Yeah, the movie that made Jonah Hill famous back in 2006. Uh, the Accountant, a super underrated movie with Ben Affleck, directed by Gavin O'Connor, who gave you Warrior. I'll be talking about Warrior later, that's for sure. Ad Astra with Brad Pitt, a great movie as well. The Adjustment Bureau. James Corden still has no clue what's going on in the Adjustment Bureau. So, next movie. Air Force One. 
Damn it! Get off my plane! Yeah, Harrison Ford playing the President of the United States, Gary Oldman as a terrorist attacking him on his plane, private jet, whatever you want to call it. So much fun. A-K-E-E-L-A-H and the B. Great performance by young Kiki Palmer. Lawrence Fishburne and this is magnificent as well. Gotta point that out. Street rat, riff rat, scoundrel, take that! Aladdin, I will never own the remake. Because it's shit. You got Alice in Wonderland, another one of my favorite Disney films along with Aladdin. Alien, Aliens, and Alien Covenant. It's probably the only Alien films I will ever own unless Ridley Scott decides to make another better film. Speaking of Ridley Scott, you have all the money in the world. Christopher Plummer saved that film. May that man rest in peace. He was an absolute gem. All the President's Men, another great film. Amadeus in the Digibook here. This is actually one of my dad's favorite films of all time, and it's absolutely fantastic. F. Murray Abraham and Tom Hulse in this film work wonders. American Beauty, not going to talk about the star of that film for very long. American Gangster, I believe this is also... Yes, this is also Ridley Scott. There you go. American Graffiti with a young Ron Howard acting in there. American History X. American Hustle, David O. Russell, of course. American Made with Tom Cruise. There you go. An American President, a very underrated romantic comedy with Michael Douglas playing the president this time and Annette Benning coming in. My mom recommended this movie to me and I really, really enjoyed it for sure. <sighs> you guys already know how much I love this film. American Psycho. I've got a review for this out on my channel. It was part of my Halloween special last year. Just so damn quotable. And one of my favorite performances of all time by Christian Bale. Absolutely. Absolutely. American Sniper, and an American Werewolf in London to wrap up the American series here. Amistad, a great Steven Spielberg film. Anchorman, the Rich Mahogany edition. Gotta love Ron Burgundy, absolutely. Animal House, this is one of my mom's favorite comedies from back in the day. Annihilation. Talk about a weird movie. I was watching this in the theater all by myself when this came out, and uh, that that whole climax was just a huge mind f to say the least. And then you get Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp. Not the last time you're gonna see some Marvel stuff in this collection, that's for sure. First Ant-Man was really, really great. Ant-Man and the Wasp, but not too bad. But can you imagine how much better these films would have been? And no disrespect to Peyton Reed, of course. But can you imagine if they actually pulled the trigger with what Edgar Wright was going for? Would have been superhero movie magic. Ugh, so many movies! Alright, you got Apocalypse Now. It's a, another fantastic Oscar winning film. Apollo 13. I need to pop this one in again very soon. Houston, we have a problem. Aquaman, I can't wait for this sequel. You got a really, really nice uh, Target exclusive digi book for Aquaman here with a nice lenticular casing. Make some more of these, DCEU. I really, really enjoy those. Arachnophobia, this is a very, very underrated, scary type movie. Steven Spielberg was attached to it as a producer. Amblin Entertainment made this. Um, I actually might add this to my list for the Halloween special. Speaking of, let me know down in the comments which movies you would like to see me review for this year's Halloween special. Anything scary, I am game for, guys. You got Argo, fantastic Ben Affleck film, won him a best picture. <sighs> Armageddon, this is certainly not a best picture contender, but... God damn it, is it fun. You got a rival. Um, again, my brother Jake despises this movie. He is incorrect. I loved a rival so much. Denis Villeneuve. I cannot wait to see Dune in October. Gotta see that on the big screen. Absolutely. Atlantis, The Lost Empire, and Milo's Return. If Tom Holland comes in for this live action remake to play Milo, that is picture perfect casting, if you ask me. Atomic Blonde, a very, very fun action movie. Atonement. <sighs> Oh boy, Atonement. Avatar. Again, kind of overrated, but, you know, it's a Blu-ray experience. You gotta kind of have it in the collection. It looks absolutely phenomenal on Blu-ray. You got way too many sequels coming out, though, James Cameron. Can you do something, like, can you do something else other than Avatar, please? The Avengers. Still, in my opinion, one of the best things Kevin Feige's ever created. Avengers Age of Ultron was okay. Infinity War and Endgame, on the other hand... Man, oh man. These might be up there as my two favorite Marvel films ever, honestly. After my big binge, it, it's these two, for sure. Absolutely. Awakenings, fantastic film with Robert De Niro and Robin Williams. The Babadook. 
Oh, yes. Certainly one of the scariest horror films in years, as the back of the box says. Absolutely. Babe. You got childhood memories right here with Babe. It's a great, great watch. Nominated for Best Picture back in 1995, if you can believe that. Baby Driver. Was he slow? 1.21 gigawatts! Back to the Future. I gotta do the Doc Brown impression. Great Scott! How could I not own this? These are instant classics. Absolutely instant classics. You got Backdrafts, probably one of the best firefighter movies ever made. And The Bad News Bears. I did review this a couple months ago on the channel, and I still stand true. The formulaic underdog sports team story, that blueprint was established with this film. So The Mighty Ducks, any other films like that, Little Giants, you've got this film to thank for them being so successful. Bad Times at the El Royale, a super underrated movie directed by Drew Goddard. Bambi. I'm not going to talk about Bambi's mom scene right now. Not doing it. You got Batman, Tim Burton's Batman, a really nice looking steelbook. I got that at Target actually for quite the bargain. If you find it in your local Target, snag it up. It's a great, great classic film. Jack Nicholson is your Joker, of course. Batman Returns went a lot darker. Um, got to skip over Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, of course, you know, because... Why wouldn't you? Batman Begins, love that film. The Dark Knight, I still think, is the best superhero movie ever made. The Dark Knight Rises, excellent film. Bane was terrifying. You got Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. I still, honestly, this is this movie right here is the reason why I try to steer clear from any trailers. That's why you don't see any trailer reactions on my channel. I still get PTSD from the Wonder Woman reveal in the trailer. They really should have left that for the movie as a surprise reveal. I'm watching you, Warner Brothers. I'm watching you. Well, then you got a bunch of animated Batman films here. Batman The Dark Knight Returns Parts 1 and 2. That might be my favorite out of the stack. Batman Death and the Family, that's a pretty fun one as well. I, uh, I'd recommend checking that one out. You got Batman the Killing Joke, kind of underwhelming. Then you have Batman Under the Red Hood. My buddy Leo absolutely loves Batman Under the Red Hood. Probably the best adaptation of Jason Todd we're ever going to get on the big screen. Battle of the Sexes, nice Emma Stone and Steve Carell movie. A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. How Tom Hanks didn't win an Oscar for playing Mr. Rogers, I still have no idea. He was absolutely marvelous. You have A Beautiful Mind, one of my uh, best friend's favorite films right here. Beauty and the Beast. Still, in my opinion, the best animated film Disney has ever come out with. Perfect story, perfect love story, perfect villain, perfect side characters. Just phenomenal. Nothing tops this as far as I see it. Disney tried to top it with this remake right here, and I will admit, this is a nice looking steelbook, but, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I still enjoyed this movie for what it was, though, because, damn it, it's Beauty and the Beast. How could I not? You get Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. He's gonna pop out at any time now, I can tell. Uh, the big freaking giant. Uh, Bicycle Thieves coming out of the Criterion Collection. This is one of the greatest movies ever made, a lot of people consider. Uh, big. <laughs> the box does not work anymore to, uh, play heart and soul, but, uh, this is one of my all-time favorite movies. I think this is the movie that made Tom Hanks as famous as he was back in 1988. And then you have Big Fish. Not the only time you're gonna see a Tim Burton movie in here. Shout out to my buddy Luke, who's probably the biggest Ewan McGregor fan I know. This is probably one of his best performances. Hello, I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. Big Hero 6, I still know a good amount of people who've never seen this, oddly enough. The Big Lebowski. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Uh, the Big Short. The Big Six. Speaking of great comedies, I love this movie. Kumail Nanjiani, you nailed it, my friend. Absolutely nailed it. Most excellent! Uh, Bill and Ted. Uh, you also have Bill and Ted Face the Music. I don't own Bogus Journey. Wasn't really the biggest fan of it. Um, you know, just personally speaking. Birdman. One of the few movies I can say is legitimately an experience. So, so awesome. The Birds. Alfred Hitchcock. I actually like this really cartoony drawing here on the slipcover. Birds of Prey. Target exclusive. Nice slipcover there. Can't wait for the Suicide Squad next weekend at the time of recording. Black Klansman. In my opinion, one of Spike Lee's best. Black Panther, rest in peace, King. We will always, always miss you. This is one of Marvel's best. The top 10 as far as I see it still. Black Swan, one of Natalie Portman's best performances as far as I see it. The Blade Trilogy. Uh, <laughs> Blade Trinity is an absolute piece of garbage. Uh, first two are pretty fun. 
Cannot wait to see what Lord Feige does with that character once he gets it. Blade Runner, the final cut. Blade Runner 2049, which I actually think is superior to the original. Such an amazing experience. Some of the best cinematography I've ever seen. Roger Deakins fully deserves the Oscar for this, despite the fact that he'd never won one egregiously before that, but... Blades of Glory. Chaz Michael Michaels is still one of the best character names in cinema history, as far as I see it. The Blind Side. When you look at him, you think of SJ. Blind Spotting. I love, love Blind Spotting. So awesome. It's a genius idea. Blockers. Very funny movie with John Cena. He, he doesn't really get enough credit. Blood Simple from the Coen Brothers. I got this from the Criterion sale a month ago. Uh, very, very good movie. Blue Valentine. Uh, don't watch that movie on Valentine's Day. That's just my, uh, just throwing my two cents in there. The Blues Brothers. I'm a soul man. Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> I have way too much to say about Bohemian Rhapsody. That would take about a couple of hours, but... I also have Bolts. This is probably one of the most adorable animated Disney films ever made. I mean, it's just, a, it's a fast dog superhero character. What's not to like? Ah, oh, sh**. Look at these stacks I'm pulling off here, guys. Bone Tomahawk by S. Craig Zeller. I actually do think this is his best movie. And I know, I do own all three of his films, but that one was my favorite. I watched all three of them. The Book of Life. Uh, Pixar kind of ripped that off a few years after that. The Bourne Trilogy. Don't have Bourne Legacy, but I do have Jason Bourne, because it's, you know, it's Matt Damon. It's the real Bourne. Brave. <laughs> How Pixar managed to rip off Brother Bear in this film is just still... Like, why would they even do that? Freedom! Uh, Braveheart? Yeah. Gotta love Braveheart. Brawl in Cell Block 99. I just mentioned this film. It's still an excellent movie. Probably Vince Vaughn's best performance of his entire career, as far as I see it. The Breakfast Club, one of my all-time favorites once again. Um, I would probably be Andrew Clark in this movie if I were really thinking about it, but, you know, I still see myself in a lot of these characters. It's like, even John Bender, he's got a lot of the street smarts to him. It's happening! It's happening! It happened. Bridesmaids. Yeah, funny movie. Bridge of Spies, one of Steven Spielberg's best in recent years. The Bridge on the River Kwai, one of my pop's favorite movies ever, actually. <laughs> I don't even know if he would want to admit that. Uh, Brightburn, you gotta, gotta love Brightburn. This was so much fun. James Gunn produced this. Yeah, yeah, very, very fun. Bruce Almighty, this is actually one of my favorite Jim Carrey performances. Unpopular opinion there. A Bug's Life, you know, one of those inferior Pixar films. Bumblebee, probably the only Transformers movie I'll ever own. I'm really, you know, I'm really, really hoping Stephen Cable Jr. can pull off a really good movie out of that new one. Please, I mean, that's all I'm asking for. The Butler, Lee Daniels, The Butler. Interesting film. Very, very interesting film. I watched that one recently, too. The Cabin in the Woods. Uh, I, I love this Blu-ray so much. Look at that lenticular. Uh, very, very underrated film. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. I actually can recommend something over the call in the wild. Harrison Ford saves this movie, but the CGI dog, CGI buck, eh, just wasn't doing it for me on the rewatch. Cape Fear, one of my highest viewed reviews on my channel, one of the first reviews I ever did. Captain America, the first Avenger. Lot of fun. That movie really does not get enough credit, honestly. I love that movie a lot more than most people do. The Winter Soldier, I'm convinced, is top five MCU right now. And then Captain America Civil War, excellent film. Russo Brothers did an outstanding job with this. Captain Marvel was okay. I'm at least hoping the TV series and the sequel does better, but uh, in any regard. You also have one of my favorite steelbooks of all time in Captain Phillips. I mean, look at this thing. It's just gorgeous. Look at me! I am the captain now. You got Carrie, the original Carrie. You have Casablanca. If you're a film buff, this is a must-own to have on your wall. Casino Royale. Still my favorite James Bond film. Cannot wait for No Time to Die to finally hit theaters. I've been waiting so long for a new Bond film. Castaway. This is still a must-watch every single year. Just so, so relaxing in so many ways to watch in this film. Catch Me If You Can. One of Steven Spielberg's most underrated films with Leonardo DiCaprio. Central Intelligence. You're like Jason Bourne with joints! This movie led to some of my favorite Instagram fights I've ever seen in my life. Just so vulgar between those two stars. 
Chariots of Fire. Um, I read an article somewhere that said that this is President Biden's favorite movie of all time. Just a fun fact for you, the more you know. Chicago, one of the best musical films ever made as far as I'm concerned. Child's Play. <laughs> this is the remake. I haven't even opened it yet, actually. I haven't even had the desire to go back and rewatch it. But maybe I should. Maybe I should give it another chance. Children of the Corn. This might be one that pops up in my Halloween special. I don't really hear enough people talk enough good about Children of the Corn. This movie scarred me as a little boy. Children of Men, Alfonso Cuaron movie. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Chinatown with Jack Nicholson. One of the best actors to ever live as far as I see it. A Christmas Carol. This is when Robert Zemeckis was going through that strange CGI motion capture phase of his career. Um, this is the inferior Christmas film that he would come out with, but Jim Carrey, I mean, you gotta, you gotta give the man credit where it's due. He was acting his heart out there. Speaking of Christmas movies, a must watch every single year, a Christmas story. There is no, no getting around that. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Yeah, watch out for this on TBS every holiday season. Absolutely. And Christmas Vacation, likewise, you gotta watch out for this every holiday season. The Blessing! Christopher Robin... Can we go back? My balloon. Uh, Narnia, Line the Witch in the Wardrobe, and Prince Caspian. I do not own Voyage of the Dawn Treader for obvious reasons. Uh, the original Cinderella and the remake of Cinderella. This is actually a very, very good live-action Disney remake, as far as I see it. Citizen Kane. Um, Rosebud is still one of the biggest plot holes in cinema history, but there's no denying the impact this movie had. Coming out in 1941... So many years ahead of its time. That's for damn sure. Clear and present danger. Dad! Dad! Yeah, Harrison Ford. Gotta do that every single time. A Clockwork Orange. Now, I do realize this movie turns 50 years old, and a lot of people have been asking me if I'm gonna do an anniversary review of it. I'm still thinking about it, but this is one of the most difficult movies to get through, honestly. I mean, there's no denying that it's a classic, but... Yikes. <laughs> Yep, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. There you go. Classic Spielberg. You gotta have it. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 1 and 2. Some of the most underrated animated films made by the guys who did the Mitchells vs. the Machines. Cloverfield, an excellent found footage film. Clue! Such a fun movie. This does not get enough credit. Nearly enough credit. Go check this out, please. Tim Curry is awesome. Uh, Coco, great Pixar film, uh, definitely kind of ripped off the Book of Life in so many ways, but there is no denying the impact this film had, uh, the representation was certainly there, it's utterly beautiful to look at, and one of the most emotional endings you'll ever see to a Pixar film, made me ball in the theater when I saw it the first time, Collateral, gotta love Collateral and Michael Mann, one of Tom Cruise's best performances in my opinion, Coming to America, I was very disappointed in that sequel. The Conjuring and The Conjuring 2. James Wan, you're an absolute scary movie genius. I cannot wait to watch Malignant. Contagion, this is one of the first reviews I ever came out with back when the pandemic kicked off. Uh, Coraline, <laughs> you want to talk about scary movies, this will scar you for sure. Man, Crawl, very underrated thriller as far as I see it. Crazy Rich Asians, fantastic Henry Golding performance in my opinion. Crazy Stupid Love, an excellent romantic comedy, Creed, and Creed 2. Very interested to see what Michael B. Jordan's gonna do with that, uh, that third movie as the director as well as the star. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. If you can call an action movie gorgeous, this would be it. Uh, makes me forgive anything Ang Lee ever did after that. Cujo... <laughs> Cujo, man. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, in my opinion, David Fincher's weakest film. Uh, Dances with Wolves, a long-ass movie, but no denying how good it is. The Darjeeling Limited from Wes Anderson from the Criterion Collection, of course. Uh, The Dark Tower, Stephen King movie, another one. Pretty, I mean, I really don't think The Dark Tower got enough credit back in the day. I enjoyed it, but I realized people who read the books didn't enjoy it as much. Dark Waters, Certainly a very important movie to watch right now. Whew, is it getting hot in here or is it just me? Darkest Hour, Gary Oldman and his prosthetic makeup winning Best Actor. Dazed and Confused. Gotta love Dazed and Confused. All right, all right, all right. The Dead Poets Society, one of the most impactful endings I think I've ever seen. Deadpool and Deadpool 2. Can't wait to see what this guy does in the MCU. I like Deadpool 1 a little bit more if, as far as I see it. I, I love both of them though. They're great. 
Death Becomes Her. My mom also recommended me to watch this movie. Robert Zemeckis directed it. Meryl Streep and Goldie Hawn. <laughs> super, super fun fighting over a very, very young Bruce Willis. Um, definitely check out Death Becomes Her. I think it's on HBO Max if you don't want to go and buy that Blu-ray. Uh, Deepwater Horizon. <sighs> Deepwater Horizon. The Deer Hunter. Speaking of really exhausting movies. Deliverance. <sighs> squeal, piggy, squeal. My God. Rest in peace, by the way, Burt Reynolds. The Departed, or The Departed. Just as a little teaser for you guys, I will be reviewing this movie in a couple of months to commemorate its 15th anniversary, so stay tuned for that. I love The Departed. Probably my favorite Martin Scorsese film. Despicable Me, Despicable Me 2, and Despicable Me 3. I will never own any of the Minions standalone films, because, you know, why would you? Detroit, probably one of the most aggravating films you'll ever sit through. The Devil Wears Prada, shout out to my pal Amanda from Canon Cinema. She'll probably be really proud of me for that one. Uh, what is this? Die Another Day? <laughs> There's so many Bond movies, there you go. Uh, Die Hard. These are not Christmas movies, guys, especially the first one. Not a Christmas movie! But I digress. I digress. There you go. Hi, Dougie! Uh, The Disaster Artist. Everything I wanted out of this movie and more, I got. I love this film. So, so good. Django Unchained. Speaking of so, so good movies, probably... No, not probably. This is my favorite Tarantino film. I mean, across the board, all these actors are great, but Leonardo DiCaprio is Calvin Candy. Amazing monologue where he cut his own hand open at one point during filming. Jamie Foxx, of course, is great, but Dr. King Schultz, I think, might be my favorite out of the bunch. The man to my left is Django Freeman. He is my deputy. Gotta watch that film again very soon. Very, very soon. Do the Right Thing from the Criterion Collection. Gotta love Spike Lee once again. That might be one of his best films. Dr. Sleep on 4K. Another great Ewan McGregor performance. There you go, Luke. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Dr. Strange, can't wait for this sequel. And this is probably one of my favorite steelbooks in the entire collection there. Dodgeball. Ben Stiller here really does not get enough credit for how funny he is in that movie. You ready for the... Woo! Hurricane? Uh, Don John... <laughs> I, I gotta calm down, guys. Donnie Darko from Arrow Video. That's a movie that needs to be analyzed for years to come. Donnie Darko. Don't Breathe. Can't wait to watch that sequel in a couple of weeks. Very interested to see how it turns out. Doubt. Rest in peace, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, Doctor No. Another Bond film that I completely blanked on the title. Dragged Across Concrete. Another S. Craig Zeller film. Uh, pretty good. I mean, not his best, obviously, but... Dread. Why is there no sequel for this? J just saying. Why is there no sequel for Dread? Drive. Probably one of Ryan Gosling's best performances as far as I see it. Dumbo original. And yep, I've got the Dumbo remake. I didn't mind it. The elephant was cute. What can I say? Uh, Dunkirk. <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm just getting right to the ease there. Easy A, the movie that made Emma Stone famous back in 2010. Ed Wood. Now, if Tim Burton had made The Disaster Artist, it would probably look something like this. This movie was excellent. One of Johnny Depp's better performances, as far as I see it. Uh, Eddie the Eagle. Fantastic Taron Egerton and Hugh Jackman connection there. Maybe Taron Egerton can play Wolverine. Maybe he can take some uh, insight from his friend Hugh Jackman there. Just saying. The Edge of Seventeen, a super underrated coming-of-age film with Haley Steinfeld. Edge of Tomorrow, beautiful looking steelbook, awesome action film. This is the only title I will ever accept for it, all right? Okay, just so we're in the clear. Edward Scissorhands, another Tim Burton film. Eighth Grade, another very underrated coming-of-age film. Elf, is there sugar and syrup? Yes. Then yes! Gotta quote that, gotta watch that every holiday season. Elysium, then we have End of Watch. <sighs> For sure, one of David Ayer's best films. Right up there with Training Day, as far as I see it. Enemy, certainly one of the most confusing films you'll ever watch. Bar none. Then you have The Equalizer, <laughs> Antoine Fuqua. Very, very strange film. Aaron Brockovich. This movie was excellent. My mom also recommended that I watch this. Probably my favorite Julia Roberts performance, if I really, really thought about it. Elliot. E.T. the Extraterrestrial. How this did not win Best Picture in 1982, I may never know. Uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. You got Evan Almighty. I do remember seeing this one in theaters. I missed Bruce Almighty, but Evan Almighty I thought was pretty fun. Not gonna lie. 
Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 don't own Army of Darkness yet. The Exorcist, gotta watch this every year around the spooky season. This is probably one of my favorite horror films ever made. Face Off, it's like looking in a mirror, but, you know, you're just not. Uh, Best of Mickey Collection, Disney Movie Club exclusive with Fantasia, Fantasia 2000, and Celebrating Mickey. Fantasia is for sure a classic. 2000 is kind of weird with those little celebrity cameos. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them with the neat little, uh, slip cover right there with the Niffler or the Narfler in there or something, whatever it was called. Uh, The Crimes of Grindelwald was okay. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with Mads Mikkelsen as Grindelwald, but... How they fired Johnny Depp kind of still rubs me the wrong way. Uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, um, one of Wes Anderson's best movies, absolutely. Fargo, Francis McDormand is an absolute icon. <laughs> oh, I always forget I own all eight Fast and Furious movies. How stupid they are. Hobbs and Shaw as well, so, so dumb, but so fun. Uh, at least The Rock knows what a good script looks like now. Ooh, is that too soon? The Father, the movie that won Anthony Hopkins Best Actor last year and shocked the entire cinephile world. The favorite, Yorgos Lanthimos film. Very, very strange film. Fences, one of Denzel Washington's better performances in recent years. He also directed it based off the play by August Wilson. Ferdinand, John Cena plays a bull and he's doing voice acting because, you know, you can't see him. I, I, I need to stop. I need to stop while I'm ahead. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I just reviewed this a couple of months ago. You already know how much I love this film and how much it influenced me. Go check out that review if you haven't yet. A Few Good Men. You can't handle the truth. Field of Dreams. And Fight Club. My favorite David Fincher film. I'm breaking the one rule right now. This movie is an instant classic with one of the best twists in cinema history. Ironically enough, coming out the same year as The Sixth Sense, 1999. A year filled with twists. We got The Fighter, another fantastic David O. Russell film. Fighting With My Family, this is just an excellent... It's just such an... I love this story. I love Paige's story about how she rose to prominence in the WWE itself. I mean, The Rock's cameo in there... I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it was forced or anything, but... I mean, I still enjoyed it for what it was, a WWE film. Finding Nemo, probably one of my top two favorite Pixar films. Not Well, not probably. It is one of my top two favorites. Finding Dory, a very, very cute little sequel there. You got Finding Neverland. Great film. Great film, actually, about the... And I just dropped it. Yeah, sorry, Johnny Depp. I just dropped you and J.M. Barry. But the musical on this, the musical Finding Neverland, very, very good. Go listen to some of that music, guys. I highly recommend it. You have The Firm with Tom Cruise, mid-90s thriller. First Man, Flight, Denzel Washington, directed by Robert Zemeckis. It's a very, very fun movie in and of itself. Flushed Away, one of the most underrated DreamWorks films as far as I see it. Hugh Jackman was awesome there. Following from the Criterion Collection. Really, really fascinating time capsule type movie. Taking a look at how Christopher Nolan started it all. Everybody cut foot loose. Uh, Yeah, I should just stop. Uh, Ford v. Ferrari, a fantastic film. You have The Foreigner, directed by Martin Campbell. This is actually kind of an overlooked film, kind of showing you that Jackie Chan can do drama. Forrest Gump, one of my all-time favorite films. I mean, this movie just has it all. It, It has it all. The Academy made the right choice in 1994. Call it a hot take all you want. The Founder, with Michael Keaton working at McDonald's. Fox Catcher, an absolutely disgusting performance from Steve Carell as John DuPont. Frankenstein and The Bride of Frankenstein. Can you believe these movies came out as long ago as they did? These still hold up. (laughs) These still certainly hold up, guys. Certainly check them out every Halloween season. Frankenweenie, gotta love Frankenweenie. Such an adorable Disney film. The French Connection, best picture winner as well. Freaky, freaky, freaky. Vince Vaughn, I don't think, has ever been funnier than in this film. Just saying. You have Friday the 13th, a really, really beautiful looking steelbook there. And Friday Night Lights. A lot of people consider this the best football movie ever made. I still think there's a couple more of them that top this for sure that we'll talk about in a little bit. But certainly an instant classic. One of my favorite things in my entire collection. The Friends Complete Series box set. All 10 seasons, all 238 some odd episodes. 
best sitcom ever created, bar none. Then you get Frozen, very, very good Disney movie, a little bit overhyped. Frozen 2 doesn't need to exist. I mean, when... Here's the thing, though, guys. When the best thing about your Disney movie is a boy band sequence involving Kristoff, something's probably wrong with it. Seems like they're treading water, just trying to get money there, but who can blame them? The Fugitive, fantastic 90s thriller. I love The Fugitive. Full Metal Jacket. You can suck a golf ball through a garden hose, private pile! Speaking of war movies, Fury. Gotta love Fury. Really, really good. The Game... From the Criterion Collection, weird David Fincher film. Gangs of New York from Martin Scorsese, Daniel Day-Lewis. Phenomenal, phenomenal performance there. Not his best. We'll get to that. Get Out. My favorite film from 2017. I cannot wait for Nope. Cannot wait. You got Ghost, Patrick Swayze, you know... Oh boy, Patrick Swayze turning into a ghost. Speaking of, you got a ghost story directed by David Lowry, who just uh, directed The Green Knight. Ghostbusters. Cannot wait for Afterlife. That new trailer was interesting. Um, I feel like they gave a little bit too much away, though. Those of you who saw it. Again, gotta say, I've got trailer PTSD from them spoiling too many surprises. The Gifts. Really, really good thriller. Really, really good thriller. You got Gifted with Chris Evans. Mark Webb directed it. Showing you he can direct good movies other than Spider-Man films. Uh, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. That is the, uh, the remake. The American remake from David Fincher. You have Gladiator. If I talk about Gladiator, I gotta do the whole monologue, don't I? My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife. And I will have my vengeance in this life and the next. Ah, one of my favorite epics of all time. I love Gladiator so much. I don't care if you tell me Russell Crowe's a bad actor. Probably his best performance. Glass. I just reviewed this. I love this steelbook, but the movie... Uh, left a lot to be desired, unfortunately. Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. Coffee is for sure for closers. Glory, one of the best war films, I think, in this collection. This is kind of how I was introduced to Denzel Washington when I was younger. The Godfather trilogy, must-owns, must-watches. Godfather 2, I think, is the best one out of the series. By far. Godzilla, the 2014 Godzilla. I'll, <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to own that 1998 version. Godzilla, King of the Monsters, a uh, lot better than I gave it credit for. I was giving this movie a lot of hate last year. I gave it another shot, and I had a lot of fun with it. As I did with Godzilla vs. Kong. This movie gave me everything I wanted. Kong was the winner. I don't care what you guys say. It was Kong's movie. Who really won? Goldeneye, the best Pierce Brosnan Bond as far as I see it. Gone Baby Gone, the movie that kind of showed you Ben Affleck can direct. And Gone Girl, the movie that really showed you Ben Affleck can act. Gone with the Wind, one of the greatest movies ever made as far as a lot of people see it. A must-own for cinephiles. The Good Dinosaur, I love the look of this steelbook. Not the best Pixar film, but still cute enough. Good Morning Vietnam, rest in peace Robin Williams. Goodwill Hunting, keeping on that topic. It's not your fault, Will. It's not your fault. Was never Will's fault. Goodfellas from Martin Scorsese. Hey, you guys! The Goonies. The Goonies. The Goonies. Ugh, one of my childhood favorites. Rest in peace, Richard Donner. Thank you for giving us that classic. Goosebumps. Oh, Jack Black playing R.L. Stein. Kind of a weird film. The Grand Budapest Hotel. As far as I see it, one of Wes Anderson's best. I'm not even joking. One of Wes Anderson's best. Gravity. This is one of those movies you kind of just watch once and you kind of have sitting on your shelf and you never really think to gravitate towards it again. I, I apologize for the terrible pun. The Great Mouse Detective, a super underrated Disney animated film. I highly recommend it. Why don't we rewrite the style? Oh, wow. Zac Efron went high. The Greatest Showman. This is a beautiful looking steelbook. Absolutely a fun movie. Green Book. Yeah. Green Book. The Green Mile. Love the Green Mile. It was... Okay, The Green Mile is a very long movie. Michael Clark Duncan, may he rest in peace, gave a really, really excellent performance in this. Tom Hanks as well, kind of giving you the everyman performance, security guard officer, but... Yeah, I don't know. Not one of the best Stephen King adaptations. Gremlins and Gremlins 2 you got in here. The Grey, a really, really fun Liam Neeson thriller. Uh, Netflix tried to top that with The Ice Road, and they failed, as far as I see it. And Great Iron Gang, one of The Rock's best dramatic performances. Groundhog Day, one of my favorite Bill Murray comedies. 
Guardians Volume 1 is still in my top 5 Marvel. Guardians Volume 2 is absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait for the holiday special and for Volume 3. Hacksaw Ridge, one of the most... Man, oh man. I remember going to see that in the theaters and just being in awe at what Mel Gibson was giving you. Uh, I've got a set of Halloween movies in here, and then I have Halloween 2018. Halloween Kills, the poster at least looks cool, but uh, I do have my doubts about Halloween Kills. The Happening, uh, you guys know how much I love how entertaining The Happening is. Oh, these trees are dying all over the place. Come on, guys, take an interest in science. Happy Death Day to you, and then you get Happy Death Day to you, the actual thing, I don't know, that didn't fit the cadence, uh, Harry Potter and the, uh, yeah, all of the Harry Potter movies, yeah, love Harry Potter, I was a Harry Potter guy growing up, not a Star Wars guy, The Hateful Eight, still one of the most fun theater experiences I will probably ever have, The Haunting of Hill House, I'm so happy they're releasing The Haunting of Bly Manor on Blu-ray as well, I love, love, loved Hill House, it was so scary, Heat, instant classic heist film, The Heat, kind of shows you Melissa McCarthy can be funny every once in a while, Hell or High Water, you got Hellboy, and Hellboy 2, I will never own Hellboy from 2019, because it was a piece of dog shit. The Help, probably one of the best female ensembles in film history, Her, this movie is weird, this movie is very, very weird, but... Still somehow extremely, extremely well made. Hercules, Hercules. Of course I gotta have Hercules. Hereditary, still one of the best scary masterpieces of the 2010s. I will never own Midsommar. I never will. It was boring. Uh, hidden Figures, you get Hocus Pocus. <laughs> A lot of people have been telling me they love Hocus Pocus and how, you know, I, I think it's way too over the top. But you know what? I still have it here. It's fun to watch in the Halloween season as well. Uh, but you want to talk about Disney films that don't get enough attention? This one right here. Holes. Don't necessarily want to talk about this star right here who's in quite a lot of trouble right now. But uh, did give me a lot of Goonies vibes watching it. It's great. Hey guys, check this out. It's Home Alone 1 and 2. Uh, the other two Home Alones are pieces of garbage. Hook. I hate, I hate Peter Pan. Uh, Hoosiers. You get Hot Fuzz. Shout out to my buddy Ryan uh, from the Suit Up Geeks podcast. Biggest Edgar Wright fan I know. Hot Fuzz is certainly up there with his best. Hot Rod. <laughs> One of the most random films you will ever sit down and watch. The most random sequence of events happens there. Uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas original. Uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas remake with Ron Howard. And then you get all three How to Train Your Dragon movies here. Pretty amazing series here from DreamWorks. Really does not get enough respect. And neither does this film, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Probably still Disney Animation's most mature film they've ever made. Really, really love it. It's super underrated. You get all four Hunger Games movies in here. This is the best one right here. By far. Catching fire. Gotta love it. Gotta love it if you're a young adult uh, novel reader. Uh, the Hunt for Red October. Rest in peace, Sean Connery. The Hurt Locker. You get I, Tanya. <laughs> I, Tanya. A great film. Very well written. Gotta love it. You have The Ides of March. Very interesting political thriller, um, in my opinion. The Illusionist. Uh, Christopher Nolan did this type of film better with The Prestige, which came out the same year, oddly enough. The Imitation Game, in my opinion, one of Benedict Cumberbatch's best performances he's ever given. Bar none. So good. In Bruges, Martin McDonough. If you've never seen In Bruges, I cannot recommend this movie enough. So, so good. In the Heart of the Sea, kind of an overlooked Ron Howard film. Not my favorite. Inception. Uh, let me ask you something, guys. This is just a test. Think back to your dreams. And think back to Inception. And watch it once a year, at least. The Incredible Hulk, shout out to Luke Ponto once again, he loves that film. Uh, the Incredibles, and The Incredibles 2. Honey, where's my super suit? Independence Day. <laughs> Gotta watch that every uh, every 4th of July weekend. Indiana Jones Collection. Um, the, first, uh, the first three movies, of course, instant classics. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Eh, have you ever heard of the Bear Jew? Inglorious Bastards. There are times where I think this is Tarantino's best, but then I remember Django Unchained happened. But this is still certainly up there. Inherent Vice, Paul Thomas Anderson. Inside Out, 
This is right up there with Finding Nemo, top two Pixar films. Congratulations, San Francisco, you've ruined pizza. There you go. I'm not going to do the song this time. The Insider, you get Insidious, Insidious 2, and Insidious Chapter 3. There we go. Um, again, James Wan is an absolute genius when it comes to scary. Insomnia, a lot of people say that's Christopher Nolan's most underrated film he's ever put out there. Speaking of Nolan, Interstellar. I think it's kind of overrated, honestly. I'm thinking more and more about it. The more and more I watch it, I'm like, eh, okay. The interview, so much controversy surrounding this film when it first came out back in 2014. Into the Wild. Very fascinating movie, Into the Wild. Into the woods, into the woods, and out of the woods. Uh, Invincible. Really, really great Mark Wahlberg sports movie, in my opinion. The Invisible Man, one of the uh, last films I saw in theaters before the pandemic started. Really, really, really good horror film. The Irishman, shout out to my pal Amanda. This is her favorite Martin Scorsese film. It is way too damn long, but there's no denying the filmmaking prowess on display here. And the performances from our three leads, especially from Joe Pesci, who I haven't seen in a movie in so long before this. It was just really, really awesome to see. I might have to watch this more as a miniseries rather than a full sit-through, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Iron Giants. Then you get the Iron Man trilogy. Certainly no denying the impacts this first film had. These other two are trash, but, you know, as my buddy Cisco says from The Spoken Misk, um, they're fun trash. Ah, you can do it. You can do it. More movies. More movies. You can do it. Ah, big stack. Big stack. Whew. The Island. One of Michael Bay's not terrible movies. Uh, the Isle of Dogs, gotta love Wes Anderson once again. It's Chapter 1 and It Chapter 2. Uh, I watched both of these in the theater with my dad, and uh, we both had a lot of fun watching it. It Chapter 2, uh, kind of an anticlimactic ending, but that's kind of what to expect with the territory, for sure. Uh, it Comes at Night, one of the most polarizing films of the last decade. It Follows, one of the best horror films of the last decade, as far as I see it. It's a Wonderful Life, a timeless Christmas classic. Gotta watch that every uh, holiday season. Jack Reacher. Jackie Brown, another Quentin Tarantino film. Jaws. Uh, if, this, if you don't see this movie and this spine on your shelf, what the hell are you doing? Hoopa! Neutral, you idiot! Hoopa! Um, yeah, I, I gotta calm down. Uh, Jerry Maguire. Did you know that the human head weighs eight pounds? Uh, John Wick. John Wick 2. John Wick 3. I believe John Wick 4 is filming right now, if I'm not mistaken. Can't wait to see what they do with that. Jojo Rabbit, Taika Waititi's film from a couple years ago that won him some Oscars. Loves this film. Thank you to the co-worker that recommended that film to me. Joker. Love this steelbook. Love the look of this film. Joaquin Phoenix. Again, what he does with the laugh. I just can't get enough of it. Loved it. Judas and the Black Messiah, my highest viewed new review on the channel. Thank you to everybody who supported that video. It really does mean a ton. Uh, Judy, great, great performance by Renee Zellweger. She was transformative. Jumanji, I still hold true. This is my favorite steelbook in the whole collection because it's just the freaking game board. Have to love that. You also got to love these uh, two new Jumanjis that came out too. Um, super, super fun. The Rock gets to play against his type, as does Jack Black. Kevin Hart, not so much. He plays against his type in the sequel, but, you know, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to more. You get the Jungle Book original and the Jungle Book remake. I think I'm one of the few people that prefers the remake over this original. What they did with this is just incredible. Thank you for your artistry, John Favreau. Juno, you get all five Jurassic Park movies. This is the best one. Shout out to my buddy Jacob Hubbard. This is his favorite movie of all time. You get The Lost World. You get Jurassic Park 3 with the goddamn Spinosaurus. Why though? Jurassic World was pretty fun. It kind of relied on the nostalgia too much. Fallen Kingdom is a well-directed movie, but the ending was just so, so aggravating watching it in the theater. Hopefully they deliver with Dominion, because that's presumably their last chance to make a good Jurassic World film. You also have Just Mercy, one of the other first reviews I ever did on this channel. Um, okay. <laughs> I still can't believe I own that, honestly. Uh, the Karate Kid, original Karate Kid, an instant classic. I'm on a huge Cobra Kai kick right now. Uh, the cook, uh, not the Karate Kid. This is the Kung Fu Kid. He learns Kung Fu! This is misleading! Ah, oh, that made me so mad. 
Uh, Kick-Ass and Kick-Ass 2. I mean, when you have a villain named Motherfucker in your movie, it's bound to be great, right? Uh, Kill Bill 1 and 2, some more excellent Tarantino films. Uh, Kicking and Screaming. You go to hell, and while you're there, why don't you grab me a juice box? Uh, <laughs> one of my favorite sports movies growing up as a kid, actually. Kin the God and Cop. Uh, you bring the Blu-ray back to the coppets. Uh, King Kong, Peter Jackson's King Kong, uh, Kong Skull Island, uh, one of the better MonsterVerse films, uh, in hindsight, which isn't really saying much, uh, The King of Comedy, great Martin Scorsese film, The King of Staten Island, a really, really fun movie from last year, kind of a hidden gem now, uh, The King's Speech, eh, you know, I mean, a one best picture, I, I like it, uh, The Secret Service, Kingsman, and, uh, The Golden Circle, Kingsman, Cannot wait for that prequel to finally hit theaters. I'm curious to see what they do with it. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, still one of the most underrated films ever made, in my opinion. Look up the word idiot in the dictionary. You know what you find? Probably not Knives Out. That's probably not what you'd find in there. Um, I gotta ask Ryan Johnson a question, though. Um, how come we're not getting these sequels on the big screen? I would love to see Knives Out 2 and 3 inside the theater, but Netflix it is. I'm excited regardless. Knocked Up, one of my favorite Seth Rogen performances. Kubo and the Two Strings, an excellent Leica film, kind of overlooked now. Uh, speaking of animation, the Kung Fu Panda trilogy. <laughs> Talk about the don't judge a book by its cover type films. I really, really love Kung Fu Panda. Uh, L.A. Confidential, La La Land, one of my favorite movies of the last decade. I adore this film with all of my heart. It is so, so good. It is honestly a love letter to aspiring artists like me and like a whole bunch of other people I know. Excellent movie. Definitely give that a watch if you haven't yet. Lady Bird, another fantastic Oscar-worthy film. The Last Samurai, uh, a league of their own. Are you crying? There's no crying in baseball. Uh, the Legend of Tarzan, you get the Lego Movie, the Lego Movie, the second part, and the Lego Batman Movie. <sighs> so, so fun. Let Him Go. I remember watching this last November in the theaters. It was almost empty in there. Uh, Lethal Weapon Collection. Huge, giant box set right here. Super fun. Again, rest in peace, Richard Donner. Liar, Liar. Very, very over-the-top Jim Carrey performance, but uh, still a lot of fun. Still a lot of fun. The Lighthouse. <sighs> Robert Eggers is not above a fart joke, and I respect him so much for that. And these two leading performances right here really, really made this movie what it was for me. Love The Lighthouse. Cannot recommend it enough. Uh, Life of Pi from Ang Lee. I love this slipcover. It's probably one of the nicest looking slipcovers in the collection. Very, very glossy. Still a pretty cool movie. It's a nice one to look at, visually at least. Lights Out, another very underrated scary movie. Lilo and Stitch. I mean, this little alien is just adorable. Blue punch buggle. Gotta love it. Uh, Lincoln, one of Daniel Day-Lewis's greatest performances. I mean, he just, he was the president of the United States in the Civil War. That's what he was. Uh, the Lincoln Lawyer. You get Lion, another great Dev Patel performance. I just saw him in The Green Knight. The Lion King on 4K. Gotta, gotta love The Lion King. It's uh, my buddy Leo's favorite uh, Disney animated film. That was my favorite Disney movie growing up, this Lion King. Um, but as I've grown older, I kind of noticed the flaws with it. But, I mean, it's still the Lion King. It's still the damn Lion King. It is still a classic. No denying its influence on Disney. Uh, this remake, on the other hand, uh, I don't hate it. <laughs> I, I really don't hate it. I obviously own it, but uh, I can definitely see people's issues with it. It's certainly valid. Uh, the Little Mermaid. <laughs> Can't wait for that remake from Rob Marshall. Little Miss Sunshine, great movie. Perfect three-act structure right there. Little Shop of Horrors. Um, <laughs> uh, shout out to Jacob Hubbard who reviewed this on his channel. Uh, this is still one of those musicals that's eluded me. Everybody knows that I'm a stage actor, but uh, still have yet to do that show. Uh, can't wait to. Little Women, uh, Greta Gerwig. I forgot about this Florence Pugh performance being so good in my, uh, in my Black Widow review. Logan. Oh, I got a lot to say about Logan, but what can be said about it that hasn't been said already? It is just so, so brutal. Uh, Logan Lucky, Steven Soderbergh, one of his more underrated films, if you were to ask me. Lone Survivor, that's a nice little steelbook right there. Long Shot, a fantastic romantic comedy, actually. Charlie Theron is a presidential candidate in there. 
Looper, Joseph Gordon-Levitt playing a young Bruce Willis. And then you have some of the big daddies in this collection. You got the Lord of the Rings Extended Edition box set right here. And then I also have the theatrical cuts here in their steelbooks. Um, I mean, there's times where I'll feel like I want to watch the extended cuts, but then when I don't have the time or the energy for the extended cuts, I just pop these ones in. But Lord of the Rings, fantastic. Up next, we get Lost in Translation, an excellent Sofia Coppola film. Love, Simon. I still haven't seen the Hulu series based on this. I'm hearing nothing but good things about it from my buddy Larry here on the uh, here on YouTube here. Machete, Robert Rodriguez, of course, gotta have it. Uh, Mad Max, The Road Warrior, probably the best of the original ones. Beyond Thunderdome, taking place in WWE's arena last year, it sounds like. Fury Road, best one out of the four, by far, by far. You have the Madagascar Trilogy, another very, very underrated uh, DreamWorks series there. The Magnificent Seven, the remake of it, directed by Antoine Fuqua. Maleficent... And Maleficent 2. Still don't know why I own these. You get Man of Steel, a lot of people's favorite DCEU movie. It was the first one. The Man with No Name trilogy. Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is, of course, one of the best westerns ever made. If you guys want a double feature of Cheer Me Up movies, watch Manchester by the Sea first, and then right after that, pop in Marriage Story. You'll just be the happiest camper. Uh, the Martian, fantastic movie. Mary Poppins, one of my favorite Disney movies. Mary Poppins Returns, a lot of people had a lot of hate for it, but I watched it a few times in theaters. I really got a kick out of it. Matchstick Men, Ridley Scott, Nicolas Cage being a OCD con man. Great film, very underrated. The Matrix, probably will never own Matrix Reloaded or Matrix Revolutions because, you know, I just... I. I don't like them. And then you have Meatballs. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Classic 80s Bill Murray. Mega Mind, another fantastic DreamWorks film. Memento, one of my earliest reviews here on the channel. Excellent Christopher Nolan film. I still remember that phase where they were thinking of remaking Memento. I still hope they never do that. Uh, the Men in Black trilogy, um, probably will never own International. I almost fell asleep watching International in the theater. Midway, one of my pop's favorite films. Uh, you get Million Dollar Baby. Again, speaking of a Cheer Me Up movie. Oh boy. Uh, Minari, probably one of the most influential films of last year. I'm so, so happy uh, this uh, woman who played the grandmother won Best Supporting Actress last year. Very much deserved it. Minority Report. Classic Spielberg. Tom Cruise in the starring role there. Les Miserables. Russell Crowe in his shitty singing voice star in that one. Misery, <laughs> this is one I might have to add to my list for uh, Halloween reviews this year. I love that film. Missing Link, again, another Leica film, gotta have it. Mission Impossible Collection, uh, one through five, and then you have the best one right here separately, Fallout. It's gonna be very hard for seven and eight to top Fallout, that's for sure. Uh, you get Moana, this is living proof that The Rock could sing, and I was the only one who knew that going in. Uh, Molly's Game. This is, uh, proof that Aaron Sorkin could direct a film before The Trial of the Chicago 7 came out. Moneyball. Fantastic Brad Pitt performance, in my opinion. Monster House. Monster House. Childhood here. Love Monster House. Uh, Monsters, Inc. Great Pixar film, of course. Monsters University. Really enjoying Monsters at Work, actually. Uh, the new show on Disney+. Plus. The <laughs> We've been waiting for a sequel to Monsters, Inc. for a long time, but... Instead, they just give us a prequel in the theaters, and we have to rely on the streaming service for the uh, for the sequel itself. Moonlight, Best Picture winner, and very infamously a Best Picture winner. Moonrise Kingdom from the Criterion Collection, another Wes Anderson film, absolutely fantastic. Mortal Kombat, get over here, get over here. Uh, Mother, <laughs> very confusing Darren Aronofsky film, and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Doubtfire, certainly one of the most memorable Robin Williams performances, perhaps one of the creepiest as well. I mean, really think about this, guys. A father dressing up like an old lady just so he could have visitation rights with his children. Yeah, <laughs> to each their own. Mud, all right, all right, all right. Mulan, I will never own the remake because it was a piece of shit. Uh, the Mummy and the Mummy Returns, <laughs> speaking of pieces of shit. Uh, Munich, fantastic Steven Spielberg film, one of his best as far as I see it. Murder on the Orient Express. When are we going to see Death on the Nile? I don't know. 
My Cousin Vinny, a super, super amazing comedy. The one that won Marissa Tomei an Oscar, if I remember right. Joe Pesci was hilarious in it as well. Mystic River. Yikes. <laughs> if you need to pick me up, Mystic River is that bet for sure. Napoleon Dynamite. Again, just like Hot Rod, one of the most random sequences of events ever. Nebraska. I actually just watched this film for the first time the other day, and I really, really enjoyed it. I think Bruce Dern was nominated for an Oscar for Best Leading Actor for this. Certainly well-deserved. He was phenomenal there. Neighbors. <laughs> Neighbors is silly. Network. Old school film. News of the World. Uh, Tom Hanks and Paul Greengrass's reunion after Captain Phillips. I've got a review of that on the channel as well. Newsies. Pulitzer and Hearst, they think we're nothing. Uh, the Nice Guys. <laughs> One of my favorite comedies. One of, like, this is again one of my favorite theatrical experiences. It left me in stitches in the aisle ways. Ryan Gosling, one of my favorite comedic performances within the last 10 years. Uh, Night of the Museum. Night of the Museum 2, and I almost dropped it. Night of the Museum 2, Battle of the Smithsonian. And Secret of the Tomb. I believe Robin Williams' final performance as uh, Teddy Roosevelt there. Uh, the Night Before, <laughs> gotta watch The Night Before for sure every holiday season, hilarious. Night of the Living Dead, perhaps one of the greatest zombie flicks ever made. Nightcrawler, the name of my company is Video Production News, a professional news gathering service. That's how it should be read, and that's how it should be said. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jake Gyllenhaal. You should have won an Oscar, you should have been nominated. The Academy should be ashamed of themselves. Nightmare Before Christmas, gotta watch that every Thanksgiving. It's the perfect... Like, Thanksgiving is the perfect time, I think, to watch this film because it's like, you're still feeling the fall, like, vibes from it. Like, you know, just coming off of Halloween season. But it gets you right in the mood for the uh, Christmas time. So, uh, yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. Then you get No Country for Old Men. I like the ending. Kind of like the ending. Um, and then you get Noah. You want to talk about weird Darren Aronofsky films. Russell Crowe in this film. Very, very good, I thought. Oh, going to the other side, guys. Here we go. Another new stack of films. Starting with Nobody. Very, very fun film. Uh, thank, thank God Bob Odenkirk is doing okay now. Nocturnal Animals. Very interesting film. I'd recommend checking that out. Nomadland. Don't think it should have won Best Picture over some of the other ones uh, that were nominated last year. North by Northwest. Gotta have some Hitchcock in there. Now You See Me, and Now You See Me Too. Both kind of guilty pleasures. I really enjoy both of these films. Uh, Ocean's Trilogy right here. A really nice box set right here. Ocean's Eleven, one of the best remakes of all time. Oculus. This is kind of what put Mike Flanagan on the map back in 2013. Old School. <laughs> Pretty funny comedy movie, all things considered. Old Yeller. Uh, don't watch this if you need something to cheer you up. Uh, Disney will depress you sometimes. Oliver. 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 Uh, on the Waterfront, certainly and one of Marlon Brando's best performances, as far as I see it. Um, and he was an icon already at that point in his life. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I love this film. Quentin Tarantino at his very, very best. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, that's uh, one of Jacob Hubbard's favorite movies. Shout out to you, buddy. One Hour Photo. Very interesting film. One of Robin Williams' creepiest performances, right next to Insomnia. Um, certainly check that one out if you've never seen it. It came out in 2002, I want to say. Same year as Insomnia. Uh, Only the Brave, another one, uh, just like Backdraft, a really, really great firefighter movie. Onward on 4K, one of the last films I saw before uh, the world shut down. The Other Guys. <laughs> the Rock is only in, like, the first scene of this film. The rest of it is just a buddy cop comedy with Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg. Ouija and Ouija 2. The only reason I own this first one is because this second one was so good, it kind of felt incomplete without it. But, uh, yeah. Thank you, Mike Flanagan. Uh, the Outsiders. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola directed. A lot of people tend to forget that. Over the Hedge. Rockin' the suburbs! Uh, Overlord. <laughs> this was a lot of fun to watch in the theater as well, guys. Really, really fun zombie flick. Pain and Gain. Uh, not my favorite movie of Dwayne Johnson's, personally. Paranorman. This is one of my favorite films from Leica, if not my favorite. Have to watch that every spooky season. Parasite. Well-deserving winner for Best Picture, as far as I see it. It's excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Passengers. 
Uh, I mean, I remember liking that in the theater, but on a rewatch, I'm like, eh, it's fine. The Patriot, Patriot Games, again, gotta love Harrison Ford in the 90s. Patriot's Day, a super moving film directed by Peter Berg. The Peanut Butter Falcon, uh, again, not gonna talk about Shia LaBeouf right now. Peanuts movie, so, so adorable. Love the Peanuts movie. Perks of Being a Wallflower, one of the better coming of age movies we've gotten in recent years. Pet Cemetery Original. Pet Cemetery Remake with a creepier cover, in my opinion. Uh, Pete's Dragon. This is the remake. I don't have the original, though, oddly enough. I need to add that. Peter Pan. Uh, kind of racist, if you think about certain scenes, but you know what? Visually, this is still a very stunning achievement by Disney from back in the day. Speaking of Disney, you got Pinocchio. Can't wait for that remake. Tom Hanks' Geppetto. Perfect casting. Uh, again, big stack of Disney. Pirates 1, 2, 3... Four and five. Got all of them right there. This is the best one. By far. By far. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you get the place beyond the pines. Gotta love Derek C. on front. He's an excellent director. Planes, trains, and automobiles. A lot of people consider this the greatest Thanksgiving movie ever made. Uh, you get Planet of the Apes, the original series. Uh, the first one really is the only one I think worth watching. Uh, with Escape from the Planet of the Apes kind of up there, but the rest of them are kind of meh. But this trilogy of apes films right here, Rise, Dawn, and War, you definitely have to watch all three of them. Each one, as each one comes out, just gets better and better and better. Um, Point Break, <laughs> one of the best action movies from the 90s. Love that thing. The Polar Express, which goes to the North Pole, of course. Uh, you get, uh, Poltergeist, the original, because, yeah, you're funny if you think I'm buying the remake. Uh, Popstar, Never Stop Never Stopping, a very underrated, uh, Andy Samberg comedy, as far as I see it. Uh, The Post, again, it's kind of egregious that Tom Hanks was not nominated while Meryl Streep was. I would argue Tom Hanks was better than Meryl Streep in that film. Predator, get to the chopper! I had to do it every single time. Uh, you get The Prestige, one of my favorite Nolan films, so, so good. Uh, The Princess and the Frog, thank God they changed up Splash Mountain to fit that theme. Uh, The Princess Bride, anybody want a pin up? Rest in peace, Andre the Giant. Prisoners, love, love, love Prisoners, love Denis Villeneuve. That's probably one of his best, if you ask me. I wanna be a producer. Uh, you get Prometheus. Uh, Promising Young Woman, one of the most uh, aggravating and emotional roller coasters uh, for an ending. Oh my god, man. Watching this in the theater was just... <sighs> it, they got me. They got me. Carrie Mulligan was my favorite performance by an actress last year. She should have won the Oscar. I think they should have gotten a better cover for this, uh, this Blu-ray release, as far as I see it. Uh, Proof, super underrated film with Gwyneth Paltrow, Jake Gyllenhaal, Psycho. I reviewed this on the channel. I've got so many things to say about that in that video. I'll just let it speak for itself. It is, you know, so influential. Speaking of influential, Pulp Fiction. Classic. Everybody has to own that. Uh, Quantum of Solace. You know, kind of that uh, mediocre Daniel Craig Bond. A Quiet Place. One of the brand new additions to the collection, A Quiet Place Part 2. Just bought this a couple days ago. Love both of these. I would really like to see more. I, I don't know where else they'd take the story, though, honestly, because both of those films are so good. Uh, Raging Bull. One of the best boxing films ever made. Rain Man. One of my favorite performances from Dustin Hoffman, that's for sure. Raising Arizona. Strange Coen Brothers movie. And then you get all the Rambo films in this little collection here. Rango. Oscar winner Rango. I always forget about that. Ratatouille. One of my favorite Pixar films and one of my favorite endings ever to a Pixar film. Love it. Uh, you get Ray. Fantastic performance from Jamie Foxx as Ray Charles. Raya and the Last of Dragon. This is the Target exclusive edition right here with a couple of lithographs. Uh, as f uh, in my honest opinion, Disney Animation's best film since Zootopia. Love Rhea. Uh, Ready or Not, <laughs> super fun film, actually. Ready Player One. I rewatched this film recently, and I don't really hold this film in as high of regard as I used to. It kind of makes me think of better films every time I watch it, but I still enjoy it. Rear Window. In my opinion, the second best Hitchcock film, only behind Psycho. Love Rear Window. Red Dragon, kind of another underrated film. 
Remember the Titans. Remember how I said that Friday Night Lights was not the best uh, football film ever made? This movie's up there. Love Remember the Titans. Requiem for a Dream. Not exactly a repeat viewing there, Requiem for a Dream. Reservoir Dogs, the movie that put Tarantino on the map. The Revenant. Remember watching this in the theater with my parents and uh, I had to go to the bathroom around the end of the movie and uh, there were so many waterfalls in there and it was absolute torture. But I would like to rewatch that film again. Uh, the Ring. Oh, man, look at that slipcover. So, so creepy. Uh, you get Rise of the Guardians, a Christmas movie actually made by DreamWorks. Uh, kind of a hidden Christmas movie as far as I see it. Road to Perdition, Sam Mendes, Tom Hanks, Paul Newman. Star-studded. You also get Jude Law in there. Fantastic. Robin Hood. A lot of cute animals uh, portraying that story. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Kevin Costner doesn't even try to give you an English accent. Uh, RoboCop original. RoboCop remake. The name's Murphy. The Rock. <laughs> We're going to The Rock. Another one of uh, Michael Bay's really good movies. The Rocketeer. Super underrated Joe Johnston movie. Ro uh, yeah, Rocket Man. <laughs> I'm losing it. Uh, the Rocky franchise, the Rocky Heavyweight Collection. Yo, Adrian, I did it! So inspiring. So, so inspiring. I love it. Speaking of inspiring, Rocky Horror. I tell you what, this story is even better with all the callbacks with live actors. I promise you. Room, the movie that won uh, Captain Marvel and Oscar. Uh, Rosemary's Baby from the Criterion Collection. Royal Tenenbaums, one of my favorite Wes Anderson films, actually. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Uh, you get The Rundown, one of The Rock's earlier films and one of his better films from his early acting career. Rush, uh, Ron Howard, I believe. Yeah, yeah, Ron Howard. There you go. Uh, Rushmore, another criterion from Wes Anderson. Ugh, the Sandlot. Sandlot, gotta watch The Sandlot at least once or twice a year. Love that film. The Santa Claus Trilogy, uh, <laughs> one of the most memorable theater experiences I've ever had is this movie right there. Oh, one of the craziest endings I've ever seen. Saving Mr. Banks, fantastic chemistry between Emma Thompson and Tom Hanks. Saving Private Ryan, speaking of Tom Hanks, greatest war film ever made, bar none. Saw, <laughs> every single Saw movie is pretty much the exact same. Spiral, one of the brand new additions to that franchise. Scarface, say hello to my little friend. Classic. Classic, classic, classic. Scary stories to tell in the dark. I'm hearing they're getting a sequel done for this, which I wouldn't honestly mind. Scavenger Hunt, one of the most underrated comedies from the late 70s. I love, love, love Scavenger Hunt. I reviewed that for the channel as well. Schindler's List. One of the greatest movies ever made, and one of Steven Spielberg's masterpieces. Can you believe he made this movie and Jurassic Park in the same year? That man is a workhorse. Clearly a workhorse. School of Rock. Uh, rest in peace to uh, little Freddy, the drummer there. Very, very sad. One of my favorite Jack Black movies ever, actually. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Again, shout out to my buddy Ryan. He loves, loves, loves Edgar Wright. Often argues that this is one of his best films, and it's hard point to go against, honestly. You get Scream, the first three films, and then Scroforum. Uh, very interested to see what they do with the uh, next Scream. Searching, a niche Chaganti film. This film was actually shot very, very close to my hometown. I really, I, I would love to see a Blu-ray release for Run. Uh, I love that film as well. Uh, the Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Pretty glossy steelbook there, actually. Or not a steelbook, slipcover. Uh, here we go. Secret Window. Very, very underrated Stephen King adaptation. One of my favorite Johnny Depp performances. Selma. Super inspiring, of course. You get Seven. <sighs> Love Seven. I have done a review for this as well. I've got so much to say about it. What's in the box? What's in the box? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> seven Psychopaths. Uh, we get The Shallows. <laughs> the Shallows. Uh, one of the better shark movies we've ever gotten in recent years. The Shape of Water. A lot of people hate this movie, and I can certainly see where you're coming from. It is very, very strange. Uh, but you know what? It is certainly a beautiful looking film. Absolutely stunning to look at, at least. Uh, Shaun of the Dead. This might be one of my favorite Edgar Wright films, right up there with Baby Driver. The Shawshank Redemption. 
My name is Morgan Freeman. You gotta, gotta do that impression every time. Shazam! One of DCEU's best. One of my favorite climaxes in a DCEU movie. Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows. The Shining. Red Run! Red Run! Uh, <laughs> I love The Shining. Uh, the Shrek Collection. One and two are the best ones for sure. Uh, I think there's there's always that's always a toss up between those first two. There's times where I think the first one is better because Lord Farquaad is hysterical. But most of the time, I gravitate towards Shrek Two. It's one of my not just one of my favorite animated movies, but one of my favorite comedies. Period. Uh, Shutter Island, Martin Scorsese film, Leonardo DiCaprio, Sicario, super super interesting film and a beautiful looking film at that sideways uh this is yeah this is alexander payne right here one of his best uh you get signs shout out to my buddy jacob hubbard he got a review of this up on his channel uh this is i know for a fact this is his favorite Shyamalan film so uh yeah hint hints for what's to come on the channel silence a psychologically brutal film from the one and only martin scorsese Hello, Clarice. Uh, Silence of the Lambs. Uh, Silver Linings Playbook. Bradley Cooper jogging around with a trash bag on him. Uh, a Simple Favor. This is a uh, this is an interesting film. I definitely would like to go back and rewatch this again at some point. I remember the ending really affecting me. The Simpsons movie. Spider Pig. Spider Pig does whatever a spider pig does. Yeah, love this film. Remember, vivid memories going to see that in the theater. Sin City. One of Robert Rodriguez's best. Whew, we're getting down to the nitty gritty, guys. I'm telling you, I'm having a great time so far. Hope you're still with us here. Sing, I cannot wait to watch this sequel. I really, really enjoyed watching that in the cinema. Sinister. Scott Derrickson directed. Super, super freaky. Really, really enjoyed it. I see dead people. Sixth Sense. Uh, Skyfall, one of the better James Bond films out there skyscraper certainly not one of the best rock movies out there uh sleeping beauty the original classic film maleficent is one of the best disney villains ever sleepless in seattle one of my favorite romantic movies sleepy hollow a really really cool tim burton film one of the better johnny depp movies out there slumdog millionaire great film uh snatch guy ritchie film right there absolutely incredible Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. This kind of was actually bumped off of my top 10 Disney films recently. But you know what? I still hold a lot of childhood memories with this film. One of the ones I go back to watch every so often here and there. Signature edition. Had to have it in the collection. Snowpiercer. Excellent film by Bong Joon-ho. The Social Network. A shitty Blu-ray cover. But definitely not one of David Fincher's shitty movies. This is one of his best in my opinion. Uh, you also have Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, one of my co-workers, Victor, actually saw this as his final movie before the pandemic. And, I mean, it's a good choice. It's a good choice for sure. Uh, Soul. One of the best Pixar movies out there. Mr. Mittens. One of the most adorable Pixar characters out there. Uh, Source Code. Uh, South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. One of my, uh, one of my good friends almost walked out of that theater back in the day. South Paul, one of my favorite Jake Gyllenhaal performances. Space Jam, really, really loved the new Legacy. I will be buying that Blu-ray. Let's play some basketball. Spectre, uh, I really, really did enjoy Spectre. You know, on a rewatch especially, I, there was a lot to admire about that. Speed, speaking of a lot to admire, one of my favorite action movies from the 90s. And it's just, it's so simple. There's a bomb on the bus, you cannot go under 55 fantastic fantastic concept you don't get action movies this simple anymore and this good you get sam raimi's original spider-man trilogy spider-man 2 is for sure the best one then you get the amazing spider-man which kind of oh yeah i'd rather watch spider-man 3 over this film any day of the week i'd rather watch any spider-man film though over this piece of trash right here Oh, Jesus, these deleted scenes. The only reason why I have this Blu-ray on my shelf is because I've got a Spider-Man series coming up on the channel to build up to uh, No Way Home. Super excited to bring that to you. Speaking of the MCU, you get Homecoming and you get Far From Home, both with the steelbooks here. Far From Home is better. It's a hot take. Call it a hot take all you want, but I enjoyed Far From Home more. Uh, Into the Spider-Verse, instant classic. Cannot wait for that sequel. Spies in Disguise. Uh, speaking of Tom Holland, yeah, pretty fun movie, actually. I was very surprised by it. Split. 
One of James McAvoy's best performances. I've got a full review of this on the channel as well. SpongeBob 1 and 2. Uh, Sponge Out of Water. This is actually a pretty fun movie that came out of Paramount+. Plus. Spotlight. I'm going to be going to see Stillwater pretty soon. Tom McCarthy there. The Spy Who Loved Me. Again, there's so many of these goddamn James Bond films. Stand by me. So, so, so much inspiration with this film. Man, I really, really dug it. You know, I still, that's one of my most rewatched films of all time. A Star is Born. We're far from the shallow now. Uh, Star Trek, <laughs> the, the new trilogy. Uh, speaking of trilogies, oh boy, get ready for some hot takes. You get the prequels here. Revenge of the Sith is easily the best one. Phantom Menace is one of my, probably my least favorite of the series. You get the original series, Empire Strikes Back, bar none the best one. Uh, then you get The Force Awakens, loves The Force Awakens, saw that three times in theaters. The Last of the Jedi, one of the most ambitious Star Wars movies, if not the most ambitious Star Wars movie out there. Ryan Johnson, I really admire what he did with this film. And then you get The Rise of Skywalker, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it, but I certainly realize why a lot of you do hate this film, and you know what? More power to you. Uh, I actually, you know, I do have Rogue One here. I liked Rise of Skywalker more than this. The characters in this? What characters? Then I have Solo here. Solo was a lot of fun. Alden I Renreich really didn't get enough credit for his work there. Step Brothers. Oh, I love Step Brothers. One of my favorite comedies. Hey, man. Did you touch my drum set? <laughs> one of the most quotable comedies ever. Steve Jobs, one of Michael Fassbender's best performances. Seth Rogen as Steve Wozniak as well. It doesn't really get enough credit. Stir of Echoes, starring Kevin Bacon. Really don't have enough of Kevin Bacon's movies. Straight out of Compton in that steelbook there. Excellent. Um, yeah. <laughs> I own this. I'm not proud of myself for owning it. But you know what? We're getting a brand new Suicide Squad this weekend at the time of filming, and you know what? I'm not complaining in the slightest. I'm hearing that's James Gunn's masterpiece. Stay tuned for my full thoughts. Sully. Very good Tom Hanks movie, actually. Do have vivid memories seeing that in the theater. Super 8. Speaking of vivid theater memories, that was a lot of fun. Super bad. <laughs> McLovin. McLovin. I mean, that's just a great name. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, then you have uh, the Superman, the Superman 2, Richard Donner cut, and Superman Returns. Rest in peace, Richard Donner. Thank you so much for your movie, sir. Thank you for the memories. Sweeney Todd, in my opinion, Stephen Sondheim's masterpiece. That's his best musical as far as I see it. Swiss Army Man. Such a weird movie. <laughs> Such a weird movie. Synchronic. Uh, very interesting film as well. Check that out on Netflix if you haven't yet. Tag. Very, very underrated comedy in my opinion. Taken, I will look for you, I will find you, and I will kill you. Liam Neeson impression. <laughs> Gotta do it every single time. The Talented Mr. Ripley, the movie that inspired The Room. <laughs> Take that as you will. Talladega Nights, shake and bake. Shake and bake. Tangled, uh, better than Frozen, in my opinion. It certainly is. Tarzan. Son of man, a man of my Taxi driver. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, taxi driver. You talking to me? You must be talking to me. I'm the only one here, so you must be talking to me. Classic. Classic Scorsese film. Ted, uh, I don't own Ted 2. I uh, would not be opposed to a Ted 3, though. Tenet, the movie that stubbornly made it to theaters during the pandemic, and Christopher Nolan was adamant for the experience, and more power to him. I loved, loved the excuse to get out of my house last year. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. The Terminal... Very, very underrated Steven Spielberg film. Tom Hanks is fantastic in the film. Uh, Terminator. Terminator 2. Best action film ever created. Uh, I think these are the only Terminator movies I'll ever own. The Theory of Everything. The movie that somehow won Eddie Redmayne an Oscar. There Will Be Blood. Remember how I said that Daniel Day-Lewis's best performance was still to come? It was right here in this collection. There Will Be Blood. Absolutely incredible. You sniveling ass. How dare you. Uh, there's something about Mary, super fun comedy. Uh, they Live, rest in peace, Roddy Piper. The Thin Red Line, got this in the Criterion sale last month. I've yet to watch it. The Thing, great, great John Carpenter film. Absolutely outstanding. This is the end. I'm not going to shoot Emma Watson. <laughs> Love this film. This is one of my favorite comedies, actually. Rapid Fire Session 4, Thor The Dark World, which kind of sucks. 
And Thor Ragnarok, still top five MCU. I don't care what you guys say. It's so fantastic. Three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Love Martin McDonough. I think that might be one of his better films. In Bruges is certainly, it's a toss-up between those two in my opinion. Time Bandits. Terry Gilliam film. Got this in the Criterion sale last month. Titanic. I, I gotta love Titanic. This is one of my mom's favorite movies of all time. Anytime she sees it on like the TV guide or whatever, she'll sit down and watch the whole thing. Bar none. That's, that's the God honest truth there. Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird, one of the greatest performances ever. Rest in peace, Gregory Peck. Uh, you get Tombstone. Dad suggested this movie to me. Thank you so much. One of my favorite westerns, actually. Holy shnikes. It's Tommy Boy. Tommy Boy, yeah. Tomorrow Never Dies, another James Bond film for some reason. Uh, Top Gun. <laughs> Can't actually wait to see Maverick. Uh, I've seen that trailer way too many times at my local cinema. Total Recall. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> not doing the Schwarzenegger voice again. Not doing it. Uh, the Towering Inferno. Uh, the movie Skyscraper kind of ripped off. And The Town. I'm leaving this whole town on my rearview mirror, Dougie. Love it. Love the town. Then you get all four Toy Story films. Shout out to Zach Pope here on the Medium. Uh, you know, Toy Story 2, in my opinion, is my favorite. Uh, Toy Story 3 is fantastic as well. Toy Story 4... So much better than people were expecting going in. Then you get Trading Places, kind of an overlooked Eddie Murphy comedy, all things considered. Dan Aykroyd is a fantastic in the movie, too. Traffic. Steven Soderbergh movie, arguably one of his best from the Criterion Collection. Uh, Training Day. Yes. Please make more movies like this, David Ayer. Stop making shitty movies like Suicide Squad. Uh, Train Spotting. Again, shout out to Luke Ponto. That's probably his favorite film of all time. Treasure Planet. You want to talk about underrated Disney, this is it, right there. Uh, then we get True Grits, the remake, actually. Love that remake. Then you get True Romance. Talk about a good movie. Thank you, Dad, for suggesting I watch this one. Fantastic performances by Patricia Arquette and Christian Slater. Uh, Quentin Tarantino wrote this one. Uh, not a lot of people remember that. Uh, the Truman Show, one of my favorite Jim Carrey films. Unbreakable. What can be said about Unbreakable that hasn't already been said? Masterpiece. Uncut Gems, probably Adam Sandler's greatest performance, all things considered. Unforgiven, another great Western film that won Best Picture. Unhinged, this was such a fun movie to go check out at the drive-in of all places. Never would I think a pickup truck would seem so villainous, but Unhinged made it work. The Untouchables, Up! <laughs> <laughs> One of the greatest first acts in film history. Love Up. Up in the air. Uh, what's this? The Upside? <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Us. Again, a Jordan Peele movie. Cannot wait to watch Nope. That poster. That poster looks ominous. I can't wait to see a trailer. The Usual Suspects. Uh, who is Kaiser Sose? V for Vendetta. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Takes place in the year 2020, if I remember right. Does it? Uh, it doesn't say on the back. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. Vacation, Vanilla Sky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Vertigo, another Hitchcock film. Absolute classic. Vice. Adam McKay film. Also made the big short. Christian Bale as Vice President Dick Cheney. Sam Rockwell as President Bush. Perfect casting. Absolutely perfect casting. Then you have The Walk, directed by Robert Zemeckis. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's accent is a little bit distracting, but if you can get past that, certainly a very solid film. Walk the Line. <laughs> Speaking of solid films, Joaquin Phoenix transforms himself there. Wally! <laughs> uh, then you get War Horse, and, you know, one of those Spielberg movies that's kind of there. War of the Worlds. Speaking of Spielberg films. Warm Bodies, another fun movie to watch around Halloween time. Then you got Warrior, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, kind of shows you how badass Tom Hardy is. He beats up his opponents inside the octagon, and then once the bell rings, he walks out. That's it. He doesn't stay for any post-match interviews or anything. Watchmen, the director's cut, Zack Snyder, I believe. The Way Back, directed by Gavin O'Connor, the same guy who gave you Warrior. We Bought a Zoo, super, super endearing film. Weekend at Bernie's, uh, this was kind of a blind buy. I was just going off of the hype and didn't exactly live up, live up to it, in my opinion. Comedy's kind of dated. Uh, Welcome to Marwin, a very, very underrated film. It got a lot of hate back when it came out. Never really understood why. 
uh west side story cannot wait for this remake steven spielberg yeah what can go wrong there when harry met sally one of the best romantic comedies ever as far as i see it who framed roger rabbit another robert zemeckis film uh whiplash one of the most satisfying endings of all time and one of my favorite supporting performances from jk simmons loved it uh widows <laughs> uh steve mcqueen movie i believe yes yes steve mcqueen there you go loved widows so good wild reese witherspoon and uh laura dern if i remember right willy wonka and the chocolate factory probably my favorite musical film ever i've got a full review of it on the channel happy 50th birthday rest in peace gene wilder uh i'll always miss you willie's wonderland <laughs> <laughs> this might be a brand new Halloween guilty pleasure, guys. Winchester, also kind of a Halloween guilty pleasure. Uh, jump scares really aren't all that great, but, you know, local local landmark there for you. Winter's Bone. Yeah, that's kind of how you discover who Jennifer Lawrence was back in 2010, was you watch Winter's Bone. The Witch, excellent scary movie. Robert Eggers, once again. Uh, Witness, super, super jarring film. Fantastic Harrison Ford performance. And Wizard of Oz, speaking of musicals, I touched on Willy Wonka already. Uh, this is definitely up there with Willy Wonka, but yeah, there's no denying the influence this film had back in the day. Here we are, guys, last stack of Blu-rays to go through. First up is Wolf of Wall Street, probably one of Martin Scorsese's best movies. This is Zach Pope's favorite movie of all time. Shout out to you, buddy. Uh, the Woman in Black, another Halloween guilty pleasure. Uh, the play is super, super scary. Probably a lot scarier than this movie, for sure. Wonder, such a such an endearing movie. Wonder Woman, nice little digi book there. No digi book for Wonder Woman 1984. Super polarizing film back when it came out last year. Words on Bathroom Walls, a hidden gem from 2020. Uh, you get World War Z. <laughs> I don't care what you say about this movie. I have a lot of very vivid memories going to see this in the theater. I was a big Walking Dead fan back when I saw this, and I got a huge kick out of it. Brad Pitt is really fun in it, too. The World's End, again, from the Cornetto Trilogy. Wrath of Man, another one of the newest additions to the collection from Guy Ritchie. Jason Statham, total badass there. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph, and Ralph Breaks the Internet. Gotta love these two. Uh, Disney, Disney really knows how to make fun of themselves with, uh, Wreck-It Ralph too. Uh, The Wrestler. In my opinion, Darren Aronofsky got the wrestling industry just right. And the dark, dark paths that someone can go down. <sighs> Man, he got it just right. Love The Wrestler. Probably his best film, as far as I see it. X-Men Original Trilogy. Uh, X-Men, uh, X-Men 2 is the best one for sure. First Class is even better. Then you get Days of Future Past, which I think is the best X-Men movie of the bunch. Uh, X-Men Apocalypse, I don't understand the hate this one is getting. Yes, Oscar Isaac is over the top, but you know what? It's still fun. It's still a lot of fun. Uh, then you get Yes Man. <laughs> uh, Peyton Reed directed. A lot of people tend to forget that. Uh, you get Yesterday, a guy steals all the Beatles songs, and like the Beatles never existed, he becomes a big megastar. Really, really interesting concepts there. Young Frankenstein, Mel Brooks, of course, gotta love him. You've Got Mail. The basis for this also gave us one of the most underrated Broadway musicals ever, and she loves me. Uh, Zathura, pretty much the space Jumanji. Uh, give me a juice box, biatch. Uh, yeah, Josh Hutcherson. Zero Dark Thirty, Zodiac, one of David Fincher's best films. Zombieland, Zombieland 2. And last but not least, one of my favorite Disney animated films, Zootopia. Certainly had a lot to say back in 2016 about racial stereotypes, gender stereotypes. One of Disney's most mature films and certainly in my top three. It's up there with Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast as far as I see it. Whew. That's it. Those are my Blu-rays. Just went through every single one, guys. Wow. Yeah, that time certainly flew by. Thank you all so much for sticking with me up to this point. Thank you so much for your support of the channel. If you guys are new here, what the heck are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button as hard as you possibly can. It's completely free, and you guys can be completely up to date with all of my future content coming out from this point forward. And if you guys enjoyed this discussion, feel free to hit that thumbs up on your way out. Speaking of discussion, how many Blu-rays do I have? I completely lost count. If you guys were keeping count, let me know how many I have down there. As always, guys, look out for more exciting content hitting the channel very, very soon. You guys are the best. And with all that being said, 
Back talk, commence!